Just north of Hollywood North, in the interior of British Columbia, lies the city of Kamloops. Resting on unceded Sequepmic territory, it boasts a population of more than 90,000 people, and it's becoming a growing force in the film industry. In this series, we'll be talking to some of the people who work in that industry and who have been instrumental to the growth of that industry in Kamloops. People who make their money by making movie magic, whether a producer, writer, director, or key grip. My name's Todd Sullivan. And I'm Carlos Sia. And today, we'll be talking to Victoria Weller. She's the film commissioner for the thompson Nicola Regional District, and she's been instrumental in bringing productions of all kinds to the region. What sort of impact does that work have on the local economy? And what sort of tips does she have for people who want to get into that work? Well, we'll find out all that and more when I sit down with Vicki Weller, just north of Hollywood North. Thank you, Vicki, so much for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. You're more than welcome. Uh, so to start with, um, how would you describe the work that you do as the, as the film commissioner here? As a film commissioner, uh, we're, our agency, our commission, has two functions. One is a marketing agency and also uh, a management agency. So we market assets like our landscapes, our small towns, our buildings, our crew, acting talent to the film industry so that they bring in investment into the area, employment, you know, use our services. And then once they're here, we also facilitate. So if they have an extra request for more locations, we'll go out and scout. Or if they need crew, we'll try and find them. If they uh, have to go through bureaucracy, we're there to lobby on their you know, on their behalf to help them get whatever they need. So, and I imagine the numbers would vary wildly from production to production, but what would you say would be an average number of local employment on a film production? Well, you're right. It does change from production to production. So when we have a big, huge feature, uh, say a U.S. feature film come and do some scenes, they, they drop a lot of money quickly. And mostly they'll get a lot of services and a lot of production assistance. So if you think of it in terms of circles around the crew, mm -hmm. in terms of on set, usually in locations and production assistants are hired and a few other, you might get drivers as well, uh, caterers, uh, food services, craft services, construction, they'll work on the crew. And then you kind of get out to people who service like, um, for example, caterer caters all sorts of things, right. but they also cater the film industry. Or And then you have the services. You have accommodations, restaurants, but also you have communications companies where they'll rent walkie-talkies or they need some cherry pickers or forklifts and budget rentals for more vehicles. So it's kind of like a ring, and, and that's how it does. Now, that would be a U.S. big feature film or who comes out and does scenes, mm -hmm. right? Whereas when you get more domestic dramas like the romantic and the smaller ones that we're seeing here, they film very, they film their entire project here, which is fantastic, but they hire a lot more local crew mm -hmm. in a more diverse area, but they don't use as many locations and things like that. So what sort of, uh, what are some of the productions that you've helped bring in here that people might recognize? Oh, gosh. Well, uh, An Unfinished Life was a big deal because that had Robert Redford, uh, Jennifer Lopez, and uh, Morgan Freeman, and Josh Lucas, and Damian Lewis. Who knew he would be so good and billionaire? And, mm. you know, uh, that would be the first one. I think some of the, the higher profile ones are certainly Jurassic World, which is coming out. The Stand miniseries. We seem to sort of remember what was just here. Uh, but in the area, uh, certainly uh, Power Rangers was a big deal because they closed down, you know, quite a few streets. I remember actually watching that film and, and looking for the, the, the moments from Kamloops I could recognize. Yeah, it was kind of fun, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, the A-Team was huge. And um, 
that had the actor staying here and also filming here at the Tronquil property. Mm -hmm. We've had some ones that have big fandom. We've had Battlestar Galactica here twice. Really? And we have people coming from Toronto, New York, and Seattle that come here just to revisit the locations where they filmed Battlestar Galactica. They even have their own website, and we're on it. So some have fandom attached to it, mm -hmm. like Jurassic Wood, uh, Battlestar Galactica, any kind of science fiction-y. We had Colony here. Um, you know, that was had a big following. So we've had a number of different... Van Helsing was here twice. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, that, again, had a big following in terms of sort of a regular base of who they want to see. We had Twilight here, right. but we couldn't talk about it. <laughs> My daughters wanted to kill oh, me. Oh, man, yeah, that would have been just <laughs> flooded with people, eh? Uh, yeah. So uh, we've had some uh, some major ones here. And then what's really interesting about Kamloops is no matter where they film, Kamloops always benefits Right. So uh, because you have to fly in here, they stay here. They also stay in Cash Creek or they'll stay up at Clearwater. So they do move around Merritt as well. We just had the good doctor film there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they'll stay there. So that's really good, too. But Kamloops usually benefits no matter where they film. What would you say to, you know, anyone, I guess, young or old, who is interested in, in getting into the film industry through Kamloops? Uh, who want to live here and, and yeah, yeah. Um, or it would, is it a bad idea to try to do that? I would say it used to be, but not anymore. I mean, it's a billions and billions of dollar industry. It's not going away. And with the streamers coming on board, it is just exploding all over the place. I think it depends on your skill set. What do you like? What, what turns you on? Because, uh, if you really like costuming, then go into there because what you find is it's it's um, organized chaos and that everybody has their own role, but certain roles have cer certain disciplines you have to have. Uh, grip has got to know a lot of the equipment and learn how to handle and has to go and study for that. But you'll find very few grips are also script supervisors. Right, which traditionally used to be a male job. And then it got to be a female job and people like the script supervision and, and like that, but they can't do other jobs. It's very hard. There's some that have natural progressions, grip, uh, lighting can be go into camera and maybe be a DOP or a director of photography. That would be a way to go. But there has to be some sort of schooling or some sort of bigger picture, it depends if you like the logistics of it, then you go into certain departments. If you like the creative of it, then you have to go into other things. Um, people love, have got to love the industry because it's very, very uh, long hours, mm -hmm. which, you know, I say that to ranchers around here and they kind of go, yeah, tell me about it, right? <laughs> But it is, it can be high stress and you really have to really have a love for it or have a transferable skill that if you're a carpenter, well, take some industry right. interesting courses and if something comes up, then you understand when we say we want to make a flat or we're shooting these days, get the basics of the language. Like anything else, no one would expect me to just walk onto a mine and say, I can work here. Right. It's the same sort of thing. It is an industry, but there's so many jobs. It doesn't just have to be on the set. You know, I'm just one of the few jobs. And I came from that freelance world and thought, you know what? I can't do these days on the set. I want to have a family. And that was my choice. Right. You mentioned earlier before we were rolling that, um, that a lot of productions are really focused on wanting to go to Vancouver rather than other areas. Why do you think that is? Well, first of all, um, they have the crew base yeah. and all the services. And it's paid like anybody who goes to work. You're, you show up at work, you start, you're on the clock, right? Whereas once you come out to the regions, for example, which we're called a distant region, um, you have to pay them a per diem, 
hotel expenses, plus their travel expenses, and uh, then there's other costs that are associated with that. Now, there's a regional tax credit, mm -hmm. which helps offset, but it doesn't replace the extra expenses. So if they can stay in Vancouver and get it, it it's just, you know, uh, it's worth it financially. And also, travel time. We're super close so that you can travel, work, sleep, work, and travel back. We've got that. But if they're going to come out here, they generally like to stay in Vancouver. Also, Vancouver or British Columbia mostly attracts TV series. And typically, when we had pilots, uh, which we still do, they put the money in the pilot, but the series is on a very, very tight budget. So they can't afford to come up uh, and travel too much. And if that's the bread and butter of B.C., that means who you're getting is is um, you're getting the feature films and they'll do pieces here but want to stay near a studio or what they call in the zone down in the lower mainland. Um, domestic productions, which are BC productions, get a higher level of a regional tax credit and they'll hire local and they'll, they'll, they tend to travel or can travel a little bit more because the tax credit's a little bit higher. And our stories are uh, a little bit uh, centered more into our rural areas. So when you see something like uh, Bones of Crows just filmed here, that's a CBC uh, series, uh, a, a limited series, that just filmed here. Um, we had uh, Red Snow, again an Aboriginal film, that filmed uh, in our area and then up north. So, because... and. And also, you know, what are you doubling for? If you look at a lot of your films, if they're domestic dramas, always in houses or, or, or whatever, in neighborhoods, well, you're going to stay where you can work and show up at the set and, and whatever. But they come out here, uh, again, because we look different. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's what brings them out here is mostly our landscapes. But now, in the last two years, there's been this whole paradigm shift. And now we're getting smaller uh, domestic dramas, love stories, which are great. Hire local crew, bring in investment. They film for 12 days and they're gone. And then they come back and we want those films. And so we bend over backwards in terms of extra scouting, anything we can do to help those films mm -hmm. because... You want to get to the level where you sustain production because if you have a film here and then five months here, what are these people going to do in between? Everybody's right. got a mortgage. Everybody's got rent or got to pay. But if we can sustain that level, that to me is you've done it. That's, that's what we want. And what do you think we as a, you know, I don't know, as a community or, or whatever need to do to be able to sustain that? Is there like facilities that we need? Is there um, a different job we need to have here? What, what do you think? Is there anything? You know, that's a $10,000 or the $64,000 question. Um, it's, it's like the chicken or the egg. You have, I mean, uh, if let's compare. You have Kelowna that has a film school. We don't have a film school, so we're not punching out baby directors every day. So, you know, that would be something that we could sustain and have that, but there's just been no real appetite for that because there's a lot of capital investment, plus it's a crowded market. Um, Victoria, Vancouver, Vancouver Island North, they all have universities that have film schools and taking film or film courses. So that's one component that we try to work on. So we bring in, um, we just had some funding and uh, we've been offering the film industry orientation mm -hmm. course for free. It's like, yeah, just see what you like and where do you want to be when you grow up or, or part time? So yeah, that's, I just took the course. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, there you go. So we did that for free. So we've had screenwriting course. We had uh, with the library, the TNRD library had a screenwriter in residence to help people write the stories that maybe that might take place here. See, we've had grip and electric um, workshops 
but they're very, very expensive to do. So we're trying to build up that crew and have baby filmmakers here and support them as much as we can while still attracting the outside investment. But, you know, it's a competitive market. Yeah. Um, one story is that I belong to the Association of Film Commissioners International, and there's over 350 film commissions from all over the world that are part of this organization. And we had a conference in New York, and I'm sitting in a, in a lounge in a bar. We're having some beer. And beside me is the film commissioner from South Wales, uh, from Australia. I think it's New South Wales. Um, then there was the film commissioner from Cape Town, South Africa. The film commissioner from Savannah, Georgia. Uh, she oversaw all the mansions. That was her job. She had about three mansions. Where, anyhow, we had the film commissioner from Quebec, uh, from Vancouver Island North, and the film commissioner from uh, Jordan. And he the, was the president. And so the gentleman from Cape Town says, Thompson Nickel, I've never heard of it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. He says, what film there? And I l listed off some, and one of them was, um, uh, what do you call it, the A-Team. And he said, oh, man, <laughs> they came and visited us twice. They were going to film that opening scene in there, but be politically it just got a little hot. So we wondered where they went, and we went, Camelops and Ashcroft. Right. So that's who we're competing against is other countries, other jurisdictions worldwide. For one commercial, we were uh, we didn't get it. They said it was between Camloops, Brazil, and Japan. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's you know, quite the you know global playing I, I, I field know. there. I'm like, and what do we all have in common? I have no idea. Yeah. So uh, maybe it was, I don't know. I have no idea. I went, okay, fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> so you're competing. and But what's great about us is we, uh, I'll use the phrase, we compete with the A-team. Mm. I mean, Jurassic World, you don't get any bigger than something like that. Yeah. You know, The Stand, that was a huge miniseries on uh, CBS All Access, and it's a popular book, so yeah. you've got a double whammy, plus it was a remake. So, you know, we we really uh, compete with some really heavy hitters, and sometimes, you know, we lose, but uh, we can be proud of ourselves, and it's going to be interesting to see what the year shakes out. What do you think about how the, the Kamloops Independent Short Short Film Festival here encourages local filmmakers? Oh, I think it's great. Um, one of the things uh, when we first started, and when I say we, because they started it, not me, but said, can you help? Um, we offer funding and said, look, um, let's do this. Let's just have a lottery. If you join, you just for coming in, you have a chance to win $150. So we did that and then said, let's do one. We'll give you 150 if you depict the TNRD the best so that it's not Kamloops centric. So get them out and get all sorts. And, and then of course, you're also looking at the digital age mm -hmm. and, uh, digital started coming in. So it was a lot more consumer friendly. A lot more people can say they can edit on a phone and they're teaching media in a class. My God, I had to go to fourth year practically before I could ever touch a camera. Yeah. So it's way different. And now it's, it's the visual medium of choice. Mm -hmm. There isn't anybody who isn't watching some media at some time of their, of their life in the day. In fact, they're writing articles on how to stop looking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, uh, can you have a you know a, a, a what do they call it? electronic free day? Yeah, like try and do it. You can do it. But I've always been a huge consumer of media since I can remember. So that's like no. Yeah, <laughs> never I, gonna do it. Don't want it. Try something <laughs> else. I'll give up vegetables. How's that? Oh yeah, much easier to give up. Yeah. Yeah.
And I don't know about you, but I bet you have a really big TV mm -hmm. and a sound system. You know, no longer are we, you know, going up and changing the channel. So consuming is so easy. And now I can't go anywhere without a television. I'm either, if I'm in a bar, if I'm in an airport, I'm, I'm even at a doctor's office for my eyes. And there's a screen telling me something that's Excellent. going on. Screens everywhere. Trying to, so it's now the language. It's our, it's our common language. It's no longer elitist. It's everywhere. So I, I, I said, well, who were the filmmakers? Oh my God, there's so many. Now I can't count them. Yeah, I can see it. Tell you some. It's like uh, musicians. You can have so many people play instruments, but making that transition into the professional world, that's For the sure. hard part. If you can sustain yourself. Well, it's like musicians. You can have, you can play so many instruments, but it's really hard to make a living at it. So it's the same with um, making short films. So offer some money and let's, we want to hear your expression, mm -hmm. right? And see it. Do you have any, um, any project that was your, you know, a personal favorite that you got to bring to town or, or else uh, uh, the one that got away, like a project you really wanted but just couldn't quite get? Well, the projects that I really wanted and couldn't get was every film that Russell Crowe has ever made. <laughs> so I said, I'm guessing I even, that's for personal reasons. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In fact, I took a whole folder of Thompson Rivers <laughs> University. I hear he's doing a movie about a university. And I sent it to Howard with Ron Howard's company. And they come went, no, we're looking at Princeton. Yeah. I'm going, no, 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 no. Um, one that got, one that I'm really proud of, well, definitely an unfinished life because you had the biggest stars in the world, and that was when J Lo and um, um, Ben Affleck were first going out. So we had the J Lo phenomenon. Oh, wow. So the paparazzi went nuts, and you have you know Jennifer Lopez talking about Kamloops on David Letterman. I mean, how cool is that? Very I nice. thought that was. Really cool. Uh, from an internal perspective, I I really really liked uh, Shana the Wolf's music. Mm -hmm. Now that was uh, a Swiss film uh, funded uh, based on a children's book um, for young adults, and it's about an Aboriginal girl in Canada who's lost her mother. She had died, and she was grieving, and she connected with her mother through the use of the violin. The music is amazing. And um, so we met with several bands in this area, Tecumloom, Skeetjesen, Lytton, and the director, who's from Switzerland, loved, um, loved the Lower Nicola Indian Band and cast Aboriginal. And that played in over 33 countries. It played in Egypt. It won all sorts of awards, Iran, Ireland, and whatever. And I got a picture of it, of the film that was made in Lower Nicola. And it played itself. So they talk about merit. They talk about Lower Nicola. And there you are in Vienna mm -hmm. in this huge piazza, 3,000 people, and there's us up there. I just thought, Wow, I thought that was cool. Another one I liked was Gold. Now, that was a German language film, came over, and it filmed more in what's called our big bar area, just the other side of Clinton. And that was about the German experience of the gold rush. So we were all over, and we were actually on the actual Gold Rush Trail that you can only get it through private property and learning about that in Germany. And then when we went to Berlin Ale, which is their huge, huge film festival all over the world, we were the premiere wow. uh, film. And there we are. And Thompson Nicola, thank you very much, blah, 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 filmed in BC, blah, blah, blah. And I thought that was cool. And then the A-Team. Right. The A team was was very very cool uh, for so many reasons, but what I found most interesting is being in the um, van, so to speak, with the um, I think it was the first assistant director and I 
I don't know, a production designer or producer or something, said, well, we kind of really are looking for a really kind of cool corral. I said, well, I kind of find, I, I think I might know one. You want it to be really, like, really deserty, like middle nowhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew where there was one. I said, do you like this? They went, oh, this is fantastic. And they're literally on the phone with the director saying, we think we just found the opening of your movie. And taking pictures of this, because they sort of had a rough concept, and that's how the A-Team opens up with Face, who's played by Bradley Cooper, in a bunch of tires, right? And rampage walking in the desert and there was supposed to be Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I have quite a few favorites that yeah. have gone, wow. And then, I mean, I look at The Revenant and I scouted for three years for that. Wow. That one we didn't get. But I'm not surprised because when I researched what happened to that character, I thought, this is Missouri. This is this is Alberta, this right. is, you know, but I'll try. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I was told to get a big stick, throw it in the river, and film it going down so they get a sense of it. So there I am in clear water, throwing <laughs> into the clear water river, going, well, there you go. <laughs> we didn't get it. But, uh, yeah, and then to see that movie just go, wow, yeah. I had found it. but. Those locations were wild and just amazing. So, you know, that was the one that got away. <laughs> Three years scouting on that thing. Um, I understand you're retiring soon. Yeah, yeah, I am. How long have you been in this job? 22 years. Yeah. 22 years, and I was working freelance in Los Angeles and in the film industry, and my parents lived here. If they had lived in Grand Prairie, that's where I would have gone. <laughs> uh, you know, my marriage had ended, and also I went through an earthquake with my children by oh, wow. myself. And I just, uh, you know, honestly, I was shoving the oldest one, who was two, under the bed, thinking she would live, and gave up on the baby in the bassinet. And I had very little family. I had no family down there, and it kind of traumatized me. And this is the days before Prozac. Right? It's not <laughs> okay. bad. That's got to be so, even worse. That's even worse. There was no mother's little helper <laughs> right. too good. And uh, I just said no. And I wanted them. I just thought it was a kinder nation in Canada and in British Columbia. My parents were here, so I came back licking my wounds going, now what? And um, I was teaching at TRU. I, I used to work in uh, Capitol Records at one place. I was in the, we used to produce mu um, music videos for the Capitol artists. And um, so I was teaching how to produce uh, music videos. Uh, and then I started putting some courses together. I started an association where it was called the BC Interior Film and Television Association okay. with a group of people. We became a, you know, a, a registered society and we produced a couple little things, projects just to start training people. And then this job came up and I, I took it. Fantastic. Yeah. So it was a long road. Yeah. yeah. But it was also a road where, uh, because I eventually became what's called line producer, I'd hired location scouts. I've hired all these people, all these crew people, and worked, and they were all my best friends. So my whole world was that. So it was a big transition coming back, but this job came up, and I was very, very fortunate. What do you miss about the job? Well, I haven't left yet. What will you miss, I guess? Is, yeah. um, I'm going to miss so many things. Uh, it's almost incalculable. I'm going to miss the people of the TNRD because I did most of my scouting up until the last two years because it's gotten so uh, technology heavy. I don't scout. I get other people to scout mostly. But I'm going to miss the ranchers, the the people who own the homes and the businesses and, the, you know, the, the people I used to work with all over because I would be all over the place. I know this region inside out. Uh, I miss that. I'm going to miss them. Um, believe it or not, I'm going to miss the politicians because <laughs> uh, I'm always talking to them about their area and what I can do and what are they doing. And I'm going to miss Conferry because they care very much about where they live. Mm -hmm. 
and their advocate. So I'm, I'm going to miss that. And I'm going to miss the location managers and the, um, the scouts that come in. I've already getting, you know, all sorts of, oh my gosh, say it isn't so. Uh, we're going to miss you because some of them, I've done eight films here with them and the go-to person will go to this person, go to this person. I'm going to miss the staff here. I have a blast with the staff. I mean, it's had a huge changeover in the last two years, but I'm going to miss them. I'm going to miss them, and especially my assistant, uh, Sherry. We've been uh, together uh, for, I don't know, 10 years, wow. every day, right? And uh, nothing extraordinary has happened or whatever, but, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to go, oh, yeah, 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 I forgot about that. Right. <laughs> That's someone covering for you. So there's a lot. And I love filmmakers. I do. I do. I, I love helping them get what they want. And I'm going to miss that part because I've always been in that part. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, right? If you had one piece of advice to offer whoever's going to take your place after you retire, what would it be? Oh, uh, Get out, get out and meet the people and see the area. Um, we have this fantastic library, but they really need to go out and drive it. So hopefully whoever's hired, um, we can just take off for a few days or, you know, regularly and just drive around. And I can say, this person doesn't like filming, but this person did, but we had to do this, and this person doesn't. And if you go over here and go around here, because I know from 20 years of scouting what these people are, this ranch was sold, now this person owns this, and this is what this got. And if you go down there, you know, that's that's one thing. I think another thing, they, there are certain protocols with certain real popular properties so we'd have to make sure that those protocols that have been set up are in place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So um, that's nice. So yeah, that I think I think that would it, and then hopefully meet the crew. Yeah. You know, we've been so isolated these last two years; it's just been awful. And I know sometimes when I teach the film industry orientation course, I don't know if you took mine. I taught one class. I said, okay, everybody, and go through everybody in the class and say, okay, what do you do? But if you see some, hear about somebody that might have a similar interest, share emails because mm -hmm. this is your networking. We can't sit and have a pizza at lunchtime, right? And those, those happenstances we're missing, and we got to get those back. So mm -hmm. that would be my advice. Get away from technology and start meeting the people and finding out who's who and introduce yourself. You know, see what happens, right? Yeah, it's the worst <laughs> that can happen. I how they think get off my land, exactly. which I've had a few people do go, okay then, <laughs> <laughs> how fast can I run? Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, I mean, I think that uh, covers everything I wanted to ask. So uh, thank you again for taking the time to sit down with me today. Oh. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you. Best of luck. <laughs> Thanks. Well, this isn't going to work because I have all my questions on my phone. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you can always send it to someone else. Uh, you, yeah, you can use mine. Okay. How do you adjust the in? This is our first shoot of the project, so it's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Working. Yep. Something must be getting done. Yeah. Something's getting done. Something's getting done. I'm not sure what it is at this point, but. Yeah, it's all getting done. As long as it looks like something's getting done. Okay, we're all ready to. I was going to get chalked around, and then I'm like, we're not doing anything. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay, ready? Sorry guys. Oh, we're doing a take two. Oh, <laughs> you should have brought the chalk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>